everybody. It looks like it's recording. Awesome. Perfect. It. Thank you. Um, welcome to the TSAC meeting. Uh, today is Friday, March 1st, 2024. It is 1235. Uh, let's begin. Uh, let's start with attendance. I'll start with you, Matt. Matthew Rathbun present. Thank you. Gabe Trujillo present. Oh, I guess it's, it's me. Uh, Danny Palacios present. Alejandro Casillas present. William Coates present. Three. Three Vaca present. Hi, Bree. Hi. <laughs> um, beautiful. Perfect. We are. According to our current situation, we need corn. So let's get to let's get to business. Would anybody like to read the mission statement? Oh, Alejandro will read the mission statement. To support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Sweet. Um, so as we move into the approval of the agenda, my my updates are so, so, so long. I'm mean, gonna I have mine written in the chat because a lot happened at President's Cabinet yesterday, a lot happened at Faculty Senate, and uh, the Council of Chairs and Directors is meeting next week. So I'm just I'm just gonna put mine over there because there, there's a lot going on and I feel like you should have some time to think about all the things. Um, sweet, so I'm gonna start with uh, announcement. Oh, no, we need to approve the agenda. Sorry, uh, everybody. The agenda looks good. Yep. And yeah, okay. Any objections to the agenda? Sweet, it passes. Um, awesome. Let's start with uh, announcements. Mike is not here, he's at a conference. Sikam, hi, Gabe. Hello. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Whatever you want. Um, I'll take the, if you don't mind, the lead on this one. Um, so a lot was discussed at SACAB about the um, the master plan, right, Gabe? Um, and we approved or voted on the um, the statement, I believe, as as to also what uh, each member in SACAB will also do for information gathering. Um, I will say as well that I was appointed to the vice chair of SACAB this morning. And then go for it uh, again. What else? What else do we got? Um, yeah, so I think that resolution was also in vote, was to vote for a for a recommendation to ABOT to stop their master plan votes in April and push it back potentially to May um, to, to really get more of that feedback that that was present that that was asked for by the faculty and senates of both CU Denver and MSU Denver. And so that vote was kind of to reaffirm that that we also believe that there should be more feedback, as well as reaffirming our dedication to getting more student information and connecting better with, with our students. Um, Overall, yeah, I do have a task for for sake up. Um, so, with the with the statement that was sent, the vote did get postponed, uh, and they're having two info sessions in March, one on the 9th and one on the 11th. Um, but I did not get at I or maybe I just missed it that there was a time. Can someone please email James Mejia so that we have specific information because last time last time we were we didn't go and we we should have yeah gave so one option that that there is well there's several options one an info sheet is going to be created very soon regarding what the master plan is and potentially a new survey to kind of get more more data that not necessarily is for the initial aspects of the master plan but, but, but more so for the continuation of the master plan um, and so that's coming out from SACAB and, and we will ask the PR committee to please post it on our social media on our social media to once we have them. Um, and and so 
one aspect is we can also ask Carl, I forgot his last name, yeah. who is from AHEC, who is in charge of the master plan uh, committee, and ask him to come to us, yeah. to, to one of our meetings to present the master plan and get our feedback as well, if that is something that we want. Yeah, I I would like that. Okay. Uh, but I would I would like to see our bodies in, in the town halls as well. Mm -hmm. And but if if it's all on your plate, I can I can email James Mejia. But just because you guys are like so deep in it, yeah, yeah just so we, we can get the, those dates and the times for the town hall events. Yes, mm -hmm. Will. Um, do you have anything else to add, Gabe? Okay. So I do have a request for TSAC. Um, we need people. We need counselors to show up to the Siggy's hubs. Siggy's hub opening, grand opening on March 13th. We'll have a table for our student government. I do wish to see not just me and Gabe there, but also a few other counselors as support. What time? March 13th from 3.30 to 5.30, 30, 6.30, 6.30, excuse me. And yeah, it'd be great to have more counselors, more support, you know, from TSEC on that. I know the other uh, two schools will be there, CCD, CU Denver, and uh, I will be at the front. I've agreed with SACAP to be at the front for um, processing people in, and then Gabe will be giving the speech for SACAP. Um, thank you, Gabe, again. That's amazing. Thank you. And there is a third speech uh, specifically for MSU Denver that I, we would like maybe one counselor who is uh, passionate enough to give that speech that day about what MSU Denver does as a student government too. Because I know the, the president for CU Denver will be giving the speech for her school. So we're kind of also looking for someone to do that for uh, TSAC. So if we can, you know, if someone is motivated enough to do that, then please let us know. That'd be great. Um, and that is everything I have, unless I'm forgetting something. No. Okay. Thank you. Do you mind sending out a calendar invite for the Ziggy Sub event? So even if we can't make it, we at least all have it on our calendar. Yeah, of course I can do that. Appreciate it. Yep. I can. Could you include me on that also? Yeah, of course. Thank you. I can. I might be able to help with this speech, but can just someone get back to me. I mean, I'll be honest. Danny, you're doing a lot. So. Okay. I understand. Awesome. You're. You we know. I'm really looking for maybe someone else to. Awesome. Step in. I love that. Danny's taking it taken on a lot so hey michael <laughs> michael dear hey mike are you able to use your yes trusty voice you yes trust i can if you if you'd like that's fine. yes please i love hearing your voice so okay um yeah if you want to do that uh speech then uh please get with me and gabe and uh yeah, that'd be great. Thanks for uh, um, stepping up. Thank you. Sweet. Did you have something to say? No, I just realized that you said because of me. Okay. Send me a Yeah, he he said he will. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Zekab. Um, Accountability Committee. Hi, Re. Hi. Um, Gabe and I had a brief, you know, just a chat online based on. Um, something you're presenting today, Denny, about um, requirements for membership. And I I suggested that as we bring this up later on in the meeting, maybe there's a way we can incorporate it into our elections code that I think is supposed to be ratified. I don't really know how that's going to work. That is all I have for right now, but I just thought I'd broach that so we can discuss it later and try to work out how we're going to do this. I love that. Yes, let's do that. Thank you, Ray. Um, Alejandro, budget. 
Um, I don't have much of an update. The only update is um, we had a total of 30 students that signed up for the um, headshots. Um, they said that the majority of them found out about it because of social media. Um, you know, we could have had a little more students if we did a little more promotion on it. So kind of live and learn from that. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, John is, is oh, PR committee. I always skip someone. Oh, are you talking about the budget? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I, it, I have a question. Is this uh, something TSAC does every year, the headshots thing? Or is this like a new iteration? Like this is the first iteration of that, do you know? Um, I'm not too sure if TSEC has done it before, but from what I'm aware of, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I think it's an amazing idea and definitely something that we could continue for next year. I think it's an, it's great. You know, students love it. But again, like you said, that the PR portion of it definitely could have been better. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth keeping that thing around. And if there's any counselors that are going to run next year, it's definitely a great idea to just just keep, you know. So that's it. Sweet. Uh, John is not here for the sustainability committee. Open floor announcements. Oh my gosh, I did it again. PR committee, please, Matt. It's all good. Um, so I'm just finalizing our order right now. Um, for our table event next Wednesday, um, 9 to noon. Um, but it's going to be one, I'm ordering some stuff, and if we're there the whole time, great. But if we run out of stuff, then we can kind of close up early because we're just doing it as a pop up tabling, um, not like a full like event. Um, yeah, so I brought it up a little bit last week. Um, we're going to table on Wednesday because that's when more students are going to be there, but it's going to be in reference to um, International Women's Day, which is on Friday, um, the 8th. Um, so we're getting a bunch of like thank you cards and flowers to hand out. I'm going to do like a kind of like a poster board where students can like write inspirational things to like um positive women in their life we also have like thank you cards where they can make personal notes and hand them to those important women in their life and also getting are we going to be able to have some elections material to hand out at that event as well yeah i can uh provide material i have or make new ones also okay. at least like something where it's like what's coming up or how to get in contact yeah awesome we're good on pr uh, can can you can you open the chat? Mike said Mike said, said something. Uh, his report is due tonight for the board of trustees. If you want me to announce anything at the trustee meeting, let him know. It is next week. Thanks, Mike. Okay, sorry. Okay, now we go to open floor. No, nobody. Okay, peachy. Uh. The next three are mine, and I, like I said, there's a lot going on, so I'm just gonna, yeah, put them in the chat. Um, hi. Um, advisor updates. Ah, uh, she just walked away. Ah, uh, she went. Okay, I will be right back. Uh, she. I mean, she'll be right back. Election updates. Sam. Yeah. So. Um, I've actually got a table going on the 12th and 13th, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, in two weeks. Um, just going to do a basic info session for prospective candidates. It'll be from two to four in Tivoli. So if anybody wants to stop by and hang out, um, maybe we should try and link up for your table on the 13th and see if we can get people going in between, Will, um, so we can connect with that later. But um, so that's what's going on um, next up. Uh, I also wanted to thank all the members who reached out about volunteering for the info session. Um, I'll reach back out to everybody with the, the final dates probably today or by Monday um, at the latest. Um, and Matt, I, I guess we can't talk about it already, but I'll, I've got some flyers and some Instagram squares I could reach out to you with and we could get those running also. Um, I am also meet, I have also met with the voter engagement committee. Um, 
and we're going to collaborate on some projects, both for advertising, uh, running for TSEC, and then also uh, in voting season, getting some more voters on campus. Um, we don't have any official plans yet, um, but we did meet up. So that'll be coming in the future. Yay. Thank you, Sam. Dr. Brown, we, we missed you for, it's okay. Do you have, do you have things for us? So a couple things I have are just a reminder uh, to, I think I mentioned it a couple meetings ago that we are going to have a Roadrunner Gives Back, like a day of service on March 29th. And so I will likely be sending out a calendar invite just to put it on everyone's calendar the Friday. And so one of the things I wanted to propose is maybe not having an official meeting on that day, but encouraging students to join you and or of, you know, peers, we want it to be a really large showing. We got a grant from Allstate to help support our civic engagement work. And so would love for student governments to be a part of that. We have the honors program, ULP, um, and various other leadership groups who are supporting that day. So I uh, just want to propose if we could maybe make March or yeah, March 29th, a day of service. Um, and that you all would participate in that. I'll put it on your calendars. We don't have to decide today, but um, just wanted to see if that's something you all would be open to. Um, and then the other thing that it, I guess it's an announcement I have too, is that we have hired an associate director for student organizations and leadership um, within the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion, Tony Ajo, who is... Yay. Yeah, Tony, who was the assistant director for the um, student leadership programs, is now going to be our associate director for student orgs and leadership. And so her and I are um, figuring out what that transition looks like. But her first official day is today. Um, so if you all know Tony, please congratulate her. We're really excited to have her. Tony's been, she has over 20 years of experience working in higher ed. Um, and doing a lot of work around leadership development and civic engagement and supporting students. Um, so yeah, so tell her congratulations if you have not seen her. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot more elections. I don't wanna talk about that because I feel like Sam's got that um, and Armando. I think those are two big things. Um, I will not be at the meeting in two weeks. I don't know, there's a meeting that I will not be here for in a couple of weeks because I have something else going on. Um, but I'll let you all know when it gets closer to that time. Thank you. Thank you. Armando, do you have anything for us? Can't use this mic at the moment, but not too much. Uh, can, I can't read, can you? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to give you grace and say thank you all for continuing to show up. Uh, Dr. B and I truly appreciate and value you value you every each day. Oh my gosh, I can't read, but that was for you. <laughs> uh, please, those who are not helping, let's those who are not helping, let's help Sam with elections and getting the word out. Packages will go out Monday a.m. after the vote is approved. There is a deadline on everyone's calendar to share any leadership topics or trainings you feel we should go over. It was share. It was a shared document. Uh, yes, Will. Is this uh, pertaining just to the election codes or, or is it also pertaining to the, which, the info? Which part? The info session, Sam, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where uh, returning members can't really form part of that. Um, I believe it's just uh, we're waiting for the election code. Uh, so we can update requirements for running next year in the packet. So we'll use that info in the info session. Awesome, thank you. Yes, Dr. Rowe. I have one more quick announcement that I forgot to share that was really important. I just wanted to give a shout out to Gabe Trujillo. He is our Colorado Leadership Alliance Student yes. Leader of the Year yes. um, for the state of Colorado. He was nominated last year and this year, but this year he uh, he got the award. So I just want to acknowledge Gabe. That is a really huge freaking deal. It is. Um, and so I want to congratulate Gabe as well. Yeah, Gabe. <laughs> Unknown user, I will come to a who's that? 
It's me. It's Re. Okay. Sorry, it says okay. unknown. <laughs> okay. Okay. She will come to the tabling events with you. Yes. Great. Thank you, Re. Sure. Okay. Sweet. Um. It is five. Yeah, five minutes until public comment. But we have a guest. Is this our guest? Hi. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. If you wanna. Start presenting. We're going to give you the floor, but at 1 p.m. is public comment. And if someone shows up, we have to cut the conversation, let them speak, and then we'll continue with the presentation. Cool. Is that okay? That was, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Is there anything you need from us? Anything? Um, I just have my laptop right here. Uh, do you want the PowerPoint to like, send to y'all? Like, yeah, yeah, if you can send it to Kenny. Oh. And then he'll, he'll help you out. But while 1 p.m. gets here, I say I motion that we do a really quick four minute break. Will they get ready? I need a second. I second. Thank you. Any objections? Sweet. Okay, we'll be back.
Yeah, we're waiting for the PowerPoint to load, Re. I'm not muted. Sweet. Okay, perfect. So we have uh, the Veterans Office here with us to give us a presentation. If you just want to introduce yourself, the floor, the floor is yours. All righty. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody uh, here in the office and everyone online. My name is Pedro Moreno Jr. I just go by Junior. I am one of the uh, school certifying officials here at MSU Denver at the Veteran and Military Student Services Office. So, uh, oh, you can skip that one too. That's our orientation one. So this is uh, our uh, three full-time staff that work there at the office. Uh, Joseph Foster, who was our director, uh, U.S. Air Force veteran, and then Leslie Rodriguez, who was our associate director of veteran and military, uh, military benefits. And she's been working in academia for, I think, more than 16 years, I believe. So, uh, and then myself, Pedro Mano Jr., I'm an Army veteran. Uh, well, I guess, I don't know. I'm still in. Going 17 years, about to retire here in three years. Uh, so, yeah. Next. Okay, so when it comes to benefits for our veteran students, uh, myself and Leslie are the ones who handle uh, like the day to day process of, of benefits. Uh, Joseph Foster kind of does like more of the overview of everything and just kind of delegates all, everything else. But uh, yes, that's what it is. Okay, cool. So who we are, um, and by this I mean who we are like at the office, right? So uh, we are Department of Veteran. Uh, veteran services, and we do have the work study program there that is ran through the VA. It's not necessarily gone through the school itself. So all of our uh, student employees are are employed through the uh, VA. So we have uh, we do have eight veteran uh, student employees. We do have one social work intern veteran uh, student employee, and this is kind of like uh, uh, which branch they served in. We have three that are Marine Corps, uh, two Air Force, and four Army, including myself. Go Army, be Navy. And so this is our mission statement. It's a centralized source of support guidance and advocacy uh, for military affiliated students throughout their MSU journey, journey here, MSU Denver journey. So uh, this is how many students we have as of this semester, I believe. Um, we have 878 veteran students and not just our students that are veterans, but also uh, dependents who, uh, they, it might be a spouse or it might be a, uh, a child, um, who is using the veterans benefits and they could only use that benefit if the veteran is at 100% disabled and it's gotta be a, um, a military uh, a disabled uh, um, disability, I'm sorry. So yeah, so in total we do have 878 and right here, so we have about, sorry, my, my, my vision is cut off. So uh, we do have 59% that are actual veteran students. Well, actually none, um, well actually more than that. So we have about, mostly about, 70% that are using benefits and uh, and then it, it goes off of the ones that are not vet, uh, veterans themselves. So like the dependents, like I was saying, you click on it. And yeah, so, so here we go. So the 737 are actual military veterans and then 141 are our dependents. So, you know, our survivor dependents, um, they also veteran students do have or veterans do have the option of just transferring their post 911 benefits. So the same benefit that myself and and William use uh, the spouse or the or the child could use as well, and yeah. So this is our uh, numbers as far as students, uh, our veterans uh, enrollments throughout the years, and so it goes back all the way to fall of 2018 when we had about 1,027 students, and then as you can see over the years, it has kind of like decreased, and um, some of it can be from 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 COVID or. Uh, you know other stuff, but it started it started to kind of increase there from twenty from spring of no fall of twenty twenty two and it's kind of going up uh, to this semester oh to last semester as a matter of fact it's not really updated to the spring of twenty twenty four but yes so yeah you could kind of see where it's starting to increase again and um, yeah any questions so far I don't want to be going too fast and miss a, miss a beat. So our demographics, right? This is for our veteran students. Uh, and it kind of mirrors exactly how it is in the military. 
a it's kind of like 50 percent of, of, of white veterans and then we do have uh eight ten percent black veteran uh, black veteran students 27 percent veteran uh, hispanic veteran students and then two or more and then other and then same thing with gender same thing it, it kind of mirrors off of uh, the military where it's it's mostly males in the military so it's gonna be 70 percent and then 28 percent of of a female so um, it kind of mirrors exactly how it is in the military, but this is what we have here as far as veteran students here at MSU Denver. And then it kind of, you know, mo most of our students, you know, uh, they do their, their the four years of service and then they finally go to school. So most like, most of uh, our students are gonna be a little bit older. They're not gonna be kind of in that uh, 18 to 21 demographic where you know, uh, some students come straight from high school. Uh, for most of our veteran students, they're going to come over here and they're going to be in that age group of, you know, 25 to 29 is our is our biggest group. So most of our students who do their service right after that, they come and use their benefits. And then it goes on to our, th our 30 to, to 34 and then 35 to 39, which I'm part of is awesome. And then 40 plus for our 40 plus students, any any 40 plus people. Um, student age uh, that are not veterans. So this is the students who are here right now that are not veteran students. So there, of course, it's going to be younger than 25, right? So it kind of goes off of what I was just saying about um, most uh, students that are not military, they're going to come in, you know, straight from from high school. So it's a huge difference. So uh, that this is why you see a bunch of veteran students, uh, you know, a little bit older. So you know, they might have kids, they might have families, they might have uh, full time jobs on top of that. So yeah. And these are the top academic majors for our veteran students. Uh, most of our veteran students, they want to be pilots, whether that's uh, uh, private or they want to do commercial, they want to work for United Airlines or, you know, whoever. But, uh, you know, it's 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 an, an excellent career field. Uh, our, of course, then we have cybersecurity, computer science, exercise science, and then aviation and aerospace management uh, is our 10th place. So this is kind of, of what our veteran students are choosing, our top 10. And these are the ones for our regular just students who are not military. So you kind of see a little bit of a difference there. Um, psychology being number one, number two being undeclared, and then all the way down to management. Uh, we do have social work for um, our students. And then, so you kind of see some kind of differences and some kind of similarities with aviation still being in there. Um, criminal justice, of course, and so and psychology, so yeah. So these are initiatives that we have so far um, that we have here in our office and we'll, you know, uh, is uh, he's tracking this too, but we do want to start a, a veteran and military advisory council, which we're kind of working with our student veterans of America. Uh, we do have a new advisor who's coming in, who is uh, Dr. Biff Baker. Um, so he's going to be, you know, uh, leading this, uh, you know, this uh, ad uh, advisory council that he wants to set up. Uh, our second one is our student and faculty veteran meet and greets. So what we've been doing for the past couple of years is we'll have a employer luncheon where we bring in different employers, whether that's um, Lockheed Martin, the FBI, uh, you know, whatever the case might be. So we kind of ask students exactly like what they want, like who they want to uh, be brought to the to campus just to come and speak. So we do have different employers who have been coming in for the past couple of years from uh, Rocket, was it Rocket? Uh, anyways, but it's one of the uh, com uh, companies, but. It's just incredible companies that come and talk to our veteran students and kind of give like a um, what they expect on their resumes and kind of just give them like a um, like a pre-employment kind of process so they already know what to do as soon as they graduate they could go and, and apply and already are like ahead of the game so that's a big part of what we like doing with our meeting greets and then uh, lunch and learns same thing so we like we tend to have a uh, uh, like a resume workshop is one of them so you know we kind of help out veteran students and not if, and not just our veteran students and you know and anyone is welcome to join these these lunch and learns where they come in and teach our students how to like set up the resume so it, it's looking nice and professional so whenever you do submit that application it's good to go peer mentoring uh that's a big big one for us because our veteran students you know we come back from whether it's you know your military service I, like i came back from iraq in 2019 and uh, like a month later, I was in school. So that transition from, you know, being in a combat zone to like being here, you know, like sitting down on, in, in a classroom setting, it's a huge transition. So uh, peer mentoring is a big part of that. So like we have like a veteran student uh, just mentor or like the ones that are coming straight off of active duty. 
and just kind of give them like a, just be there for them, kind of be like a, their own personal little uh, like council, uh, like a you know whatever it, you know you want to call it. But it's just it's just really it's really helpful to have our RP mentoring. So you know if if I'm struggling with with homework and just tr- you know trying to get into that school mentality, I could go and talk to Will, right? And we'll be like, okay, you know, like this is how I did it, and this is what's going to help you. So peer mentoring is a is a huge thing for us and resource and luncheons and then counseling center and then a possible center remodel. I don't know if any of you have ever been to our office, but it has like this 1980s kind of like uh, carpet and fashion to it. Uh, so we are in the process of like trying to get everything done with AHEC, but uh, AHEC is, is really tough to get through. But um, so we do have a, a possible center remodeling uh, happening this summer. So if you happen to stop by natively, we're in, in room 215. So if you want to see how it looks like now, and then how it might look like later on. So uh, we're pretty we're pretty excited about that one. So next slide. Uh, so and that's the goal, right? To gra- uh, to graduate. So aside from um, from uh, from graduation, we do have our own like veteran graduation from commencement. We do have our own. So like the day before commencement, we tend to have our veteran graduation where our veteran students they get that red medallion that's around their necks. And um, so it's really uh, just for veteran students and the veteran families. And, you know, th- you know, you could come, dre- you know, dress just nice, you know, business casual and you don't have to wear your cap and gown for this. So it's more personal for our veteran students because it's just kind of, you know, we're putting them and, you know, just kind of, yeah, just giving them the congratulations of, for everything that they've done. So and that was from spring of 2022, I believe. Yes, that was our veteran students from 2022. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's kind of like a glimpse of how it looks like right now, our, our uh, veteran center. So we do have a computer lab. We do have a lounge, kitchen, study areas, and office staff support. And that's how it looks like on the inside. So if you look all the way to the right, there, there's like our kitchen. So if you look to the right of that, uh, there's like uh, these like um, like storage storages, I guess. I don't know. But we're going to get rid of that whole wall area and make it a little bit easier. And you will see what I mean in the next picture. So right there, right? So it's, I don't know, I really can't tell how it looks like. Is it is it three pictures? Yes, it's three, right? So the middle one, if you look on the middle picture, uh, that wall, that white wall, it's right there with all those things hanging down from it. Like we're gonna get rid of that wall because like every time we do have our meetings, our student veteran uh, of America meetings, uh, it's kind of hard to get everybody kind of uh, in, in, in involved because we do have that wall there so we had we, so every time we do have meetings there we have students that are like behind that so sometimes they, they get to miss what their uh, what the president might be saying the vice president or whoever is speaking might be saying so that's a big part of it we're trying to you know make it a little bit more open for everyone so whenever we do have these meetings everyone could be involved and if anyone has any questions that's in the back you know you're able to be seen and yeah, so like there you go. On um, if you look on the right side, you see how that one student is behind that wall. So we're trying to get rid of that. So uh, we have more, you know, just experience for everyone to go through and you know just be able to see the whole presentation and still, you know, instead of trying to look through a corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then educational benefits. I'm not necessarily going to go like really, really into this. Uh, our benefits is more. It's more. This part right here is more the process of of our veteran students and how they get paid. But uh, I'll kind of go through like the brief. A brief overview of this. Next slide. So for our veteran students, uh, they do get twenty seven hundred every month for going to school from the VA, and it does also uh, help out with a book stipend. So uh, our students who are using the Chapter Thirty Three benefit, they do get a thousand dollars per school year, so which is about five hundred every uh, fall and spring semester. So it goes towards your book stipend or pretty much whatever you want, really. Uh, you know, a lot of professors, they don't necessarily require the books or they have their own like copy of it. So uh, any money that comes from that book stipend is pretty much essentially gone to the student himself. Um, yeah, so it's 2,700 every month. So that, that's how much our students get for being, uh, for doing their service, you know, so, and it pays for your full tuition and fees. So essentially you leave out of here with the bachelors with no student loans, no nothing, nothing at all, no debt whatsoever. So it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good incentive. And of course, you know, for our uh, for our students, oh, thank you. Um, for our students that are full time, uh, you know, obviously 12 credits. In order for you to receive the 2,700, 
You got to be a full-time student, 12 credits, uh, the minimum. You got to be at least one credit in person. And that's where it kind of gets everybody because um, if you look in the bottom, it says that uh, if you're all online, you only get 988 compared to the 2,700. So that's a huge gap. So it, especially here in Denver where rent is a little bit expensive, um, pretty much the cost of living here is expensive. So, you know, that 2,700 is crucial uh, rather than that 988. So for our veteran students, uh, we tend to like tell them like, you know, try to take at least one class in person. So you do get that full benefit, uh, that 2,700 rather than a 988. So that's, that's huge. Next slide. Uh, next slide. That's not really necessary. And, you know, obviously for our veteran students, uh, for any, any, any kind of training that you, you might've, you might've done in the military, any, uh, it's, it's part of your joint service transcript and also with your 214, right? So every single military member, once they get out, they get a, a DD-214, which is pretty much saying that, okay, cool, you know, William Coates did, you know, so many years. He did his four years in the Marine Corps, and, you know, this is where he did, and this is how many awards he got, and he's, you know, he's an honorable discharge. So everybody, every uh, military service member gets that form. So you bring that to our office here with, the, with Bren um, and Brandy Schooler. And they will go through everyone's uh, joint servant transcripts in 214, and they do get credits for it. So, uh, like myself, I did get two credits uh, automatically. I got my public speaking class and my global diversity class already covered, so I didn't have to take that. So essentially, you're already six credits already in. So you know it helps out. So you know you're kind of ahead of the game. Sorry, I'm trying to read what this is. We're going to, I'm going to do the comments and questions at the end. So okay, you cool. can, right so you can cool. keep going. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, trying to think. Um, yeah, that's mostly just to our veteran students. Just don't, don't, don't drop a class. <laughs> Please, because you're going to get that. And also for our students, they get the free health care, uh, the health insurance here. Uh, as long as you're 100% eligible. Uh, you do get the uh, the healthcare uh, insurance, and um, just don't waive it. And of, of course, if you have your own personal insurance, by all means. But if not, then you know you're covered for like the next three, four years that you are enrolled here at M2 Denver. Well, of course, you got to be at least nine credits and above. But it's pretty nice. You know, I got my MRI done here, and so uh, flu shots, whatever the case might be, our veteran students are covered 100% as long as they're at nine credits. So. Mm -hmm. Financial aid. This is another thing that our veteran students, uh, um, you know, get for you know, get on top of their tuition and the 2,700. A lot of our veteran students don't know that they could double dip. So not only do you get your tuition and fees paid for, and you do get the 2,700 monthly stipend, but you also could apply for financial aid because essentially, to the to the government, um, what you get from the GI Bill is not necessarily actual income. So essentially, you're broke, right? That's what like it, it looks like on paper. So you do, or you, so you are allowed to um, get financial aid. So on top of whatever you're getting, you get whatever grant money you want, scholarship money you want, and if you, of course, if you want to uh, go for the loans, by all means. But so yeah, so you know, it's 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 a nice incentive every January and August. So it's it's nice. I, I know because I was getting about seven thousand on top of what I was getting from the G, the GI Bill. So it was nice. So uh, so yeah, so that's another incentive for our veteran students. Um, college opportunity fund. That's you know everyone needs to do that. So that's pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, and this is just mostly for me to to my to my veteran students. You know, make sure that you're following your degree plan. A lot of our students they go for psychology, but they want to take a beer class on top of that. So the VA the VA is like no. So um, yeah. So the, this is like the things and stuff that a lot of veteran students are like hearing is that they don't pay for parking. <laughs> It's not part of our, you know, it's not added to our, you know, tuition and fees, uh, and which we're kind of trying to advocate for because a lot of our veteran students do have disabilities where um, sometimes they cannot walk or they require canes and whatnot. And then with the winners here, sometimes it's a it could get a little bit difficult for our students. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, parking is, is is expensive, and it, you know, and it, it's been going up for the past three four years. So a lot of us students uh, are forced to like pay that and then still have to walk. So. Uh, we're trying to at least trying to waive the parking fee, which is one thing that we that we're really trying to fight for. But um, yeah. And then this is another benefit for our 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 veteran students. I'm not going to go in detail with this, but that's just another benefit that our veteran students can apply for if they're at 20% disability. 
And then that's for our students that have tuition assistance. Uh, and then it has every link for every single branch. And that's pretty much it with that one. And then that's our contact information, of course. Uh, we, you know, right, right at the Tivoli building 215. And that is our email. So, yeah. Oh, and then, oh, yeah, if you go back one more time. So every uh, Veterans Day, which is in November, the first week of November, uh, we do plant a flag for every veteran student who's here. So uh, you'll see us out there. I don't know if you have noticed, but like in front of the in the quads, right in front of the Tivoli Brewery, uh, we do have the flags there. So every November we do that for for a full week. We'll have them out there. So um, you'll see us again once again this year uh, out there and planting flags. So by all means, if you want to come and help us out, it's a quick just you know plant it you know just stab it on the ground and you're good to go. But we do that every year for our veteran students just to acknowledge everyone who's attending school here. And then that is it. Thank you so much. And awesome. if there's any questions. Yeah, can we open the chat just so I can read what recent is? Thank you. Uh, in her behavioral health department, they are working with uh, veteran students. So they at least have one class in person so it can uh, be deemed hybrid, uh, hybrid. That seems to work. Maybe that's something you and Will can advocate for with the university so all of it can be reassured about getting their full amount of money each month. No, yeah, I, I, I agree because uh, we have been in, in meetings before myself, uh, Joe and Leslie with uh, advisors and different departments here at MSU trying to, to uh, um, fight for this because it, it, it's unfortunate for some of our degrees. Um, mostly like some of them, like once you get to like your junior and senior year, a lot of them just happen to be online. So a lot of our students don't even have the option of having like an up in person class. And like I said earlier, a lot of our students do have kids. They have, you know, jobs and whatnot. So. A lot of our students do rely on this money. So, you know, like I said, you know, that big gap from 2,700 from 900 is, is a huge gap. So uh, we are fighting for that. And uh, we're trying to make sure and stuff that at least, you know, something could be done so we could, you know, tell the VA like, hey, look, this student is, you know, not necessarily in person, but give them the in person kind of credit for it. So. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here first. And then um, I, I'm going to go read and then I'll, oh, or is this an answer to him? To what well, he just it is, said? It's, yeah, it's go a ahead. question. It, I, I apologize. I've been meaning to ask this of Will. So forgive me because it's not necessarily about veterans, but I'm wondering why don't we have um, a, a um, oh my gosh, I just lost my mind. A, um, what is it? reserve ROTC at, on campus or, you know, shared here with CU Denver because you have to go to Boulder. And I know one of my sons was interested in that, but he wasn't going to go to Boulder at five in the morning, you know, to be able to do that. Do you know this? I know it's not about veterans, so I apologize. Um, so for ROTC, I know that we definitely get students uh, ROTC students from uh, for MSC Denver, you know, CU Denver as well. Uh, I'm not sure about CCD, but uh, we do have a, from my understanding, there is a program on campus. I know it's the Air Force specifically ROTC. I'm not sure about the Army. Um, I know there are recruiting centers here as well on campus, but as far as for ROTC, since they are going to be active duty very soon, we tell them like, yeah, we we can help those students, but they are part of a different department. Um, and I'm not sure, I, I can't remember the exact department, but it's like, a, since they're gonna be active duty, they have to go to the branch and talk to the, edu what are they called, the education? They're like education advisors for the for active duty. So when it comes to ROTC, we don't necessarily deal with their benefits, but we can direct them to the right uh, uh, source, if that makes sense. We, we deal with uh, mostly post after. So um, that's more our realm with the VA as well. So, I mean, you said your, your son is in ROTC for the army. You're muted, Ray. Sorry, he was interested in it for Air Force, but even oh. though they might have they have a like a office here, it's not really the whole thing, and you have to travel right. to near Boulder for that. 
Right. And I just because there's two universities here. I mean, I CCD is as community college. I think ROTC is four years, so it really wouldn't apply. But mm -hmm. anyway, I just wondered if you knew why there wasn't a full office here. But that's beyond the scope. And I appreciate that presentation. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I did have a couple of things. So with the help with AHEC. Will just got selected as a vice chair of SACAB, which these are the people that deal with AHEC. Um, so you have a direct contact with student government in that sense, if you need help. Um, and then um, the second one with the office space, we do have this availability within the student government that you can reserve the office space. Uh, if you guys ever need to use our office so you don't have to be in that ill right, yeah. shape, mm -hmm. uh, just shoot us an email and we'll, we'll be happy to help you and you guys can use the space. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Because like, especially when it comes to our luncheons with the employers is when we have like a lot of people come in. So it would be nice to have like a bigger, bigger space. Yeah. So, for yeah. sure. Shoot us an email and then we'll we'll make sure that we'll, we'll make something work for you. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Anybody else? Yes, Will. Uh, just one final comment on this. If if a student veteran comes to you, please uh, send them them, excuse me, to us, and we will oh, yeah. best uh, provide them the help they need. Okay. So sounds you. awesome. Thank you, Will. Yes, John. What day and time is the next lunch and learn? Because I like to come to it. That's a good question. We're trying to get uh, figure that out right now uh, with Joe being gone for the rest of the week. Uh, we're trying to get that here situated here soon before spring break, we're hoping. Um, but it's kind of that, that's kind of like a little close. Uh, but once we do, um, we'll make sure that Will lets everyone know. Uh, but as of right now, it's still kind of like to be determined. But we will. Is there anyone in particular that you would like to see um, to reach out to? Like any kind of like specific employer? Because I, because I, I know for our criminal justice students, we had like a bunch of like police departments, FBI, and stuff like that. Well, I have an advertising agency, and also my nephew is a student here, so I want to have access to be able to come into the space, not being a veteran, and have utilization of the space, and kind of keep my ears to the ground and see what opportunities available for other students and myself as well. So I figure lunch and learn will give me greater visible access. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. No, yeah, and absolutely. Like our office is not it, uh, only for our veteran uh, students or military affiliated students. Everyone is welcome in our office. It's just that it's mostly just veteran students that go to it. But that's like the misconception right now is that only veteran students are allowed. But um, that office is it's it's more than welcome for anybody. We do have snacks. We do have our own pantry. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, um, a lounge area, a computer lab. So for any student who wants to come in there, by all means, you know, it's just kind of. Well, uh, yeah. I'll throw this out at you. I'm looking for a friend of mine. His name is Kunta Emery. He's a black man veteran, and I haven't seen him since Thanksgiving. So if you put the word out, he's a student here as well. OK. 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 All right. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much for coming in and informing us. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Sweet. Um, okay. Next one. Uh, voting on amendment changes. Is that it, there's not a name in it. Is that Rio or Armando? Oh no, you're good. You're good. I'm I'm waiting for an answer from someone. Oh, you're good. It is not me. I, it is. That's not you. Because I know I don't have the PowerPoint with the. Uh, Armando's not in the. Armando's not on anymore. Armando's not on anymore. And we, yeah, like none of us have access to the PowerPoint. I'd made the changes, um, some changes, but he was. Finalizing, so I imagine it's coming from Armando. Yes, Gabe. Oh my God, oh, there we go. Okay, just a little like quick thing. I unfortunately have to go catch a bus real quick at like 140. 
So I'll leave like 140 is what I mean to say. I'll still be connected on. I'm still going to like log on okay. via Teams and I'm still going to have my input. I'm just going to switch to virtual here okay. in a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the next business yeah. item. Yeah. And then we'll see if we can get to this. Um, sweet. So this one's mine. And it's uh, to adjust the requirements for eligible candidates. Because it is my resolution, I cannot direct the conversation. So it's you. Sweet. Huh? Okay, that's fine. Uh, Armando is trying, we're trying to page Armando while this happens. But I'll start, and then once we start the debate, it's, it's you. Um, sweet. So the abstract is, as a uh, TSEC is a body which seeks to promote the, and enhance the student experience. Counselors must, must model and promote participation in successful academic behavior. Thus, seeking students, uh, students seeking a leadership position must demonstrate adaptability to fulfill the several roles student leadership requires. Whereas TSEC election code currently requires only one credit hour for a student to be able to run for a candidacy, this action has led to counselors falling behind in academic and leadership roles. Whereas an argument can be made that leaders do not, are not identify their GPA, a good academic standard demonstrates a commitment not only to the university, but the individual's growth. Whereas believing in our students are incapable of measurably good academic standing is patronizing and violent. As an advocacy council, we must empower students to believe in themselves as academics who can be catalysts in academia, rather than a subdued, subdued body which pays tuition. Whereas we must not be a deterring force for student success and morale. On the contrary, as we focus on the student engagement and graduation, TSEC must focus on constantly providing a sustainable experience that leads to academic, personal, and interpersonal growth and success. Um, hereby further resolved, a student seeking candidacy and TSEC must be registered as a part-time student with a minimum of six credit hours per semester and hold a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.8 during elections and throughout their term if elected thus disposing of the one credit hour requirement. Moreover, previous requirements of maintaining a clean record per student conduct and having at least one academic year left prior to graduation are to remain standing. I will, yeah, that, that's, that's it. You're up. Thank you. Okay, so I think I, with this resolution, it it just reminds me of um, why TSAC was created was to become more accessible for students, regardless of what they have gone through. Um, and so I do see this kind of restricting that accessibility of TSAC and who runs on TSAC, therefore uh, creating another barrier for students. However, I also see the, the flip side of this being a student government and we are students first. Um, and I definitely do see that students should, should that student student leaders should be leading in their academics as well in some aspects, and and really have that focus of if you're going to be a student a student leader, your student still comes first, and so your idea or not idea, but like your conceptualization of student would be um, more important technically than like the leadership role in this sense. Um, and so with that, I think. I would suggest or friendly amendment to bring down the GPA requirement to the to the 2.0 that's required for good academic standing by the university standards. So therefore, if a student is found as good academic standing by university efforts, then I think we should also follow that as well. Um, however, I do still stand on that aspect that this is restricting the accessibility of TSAC to the student body. Thank you. Um. Um, I guess, and, and that's why I mentioned like the patronizing side of it, because I do feel that telling students like, oh, well, do you only take one credit hour? Like, like I, I understand that we've gone through a lot and we're in this university because we've gone through a lot. Um, but I also think about next steps on uh, when it comes to like graduate school or law school. And, you know, and like, I, I also think that TSEC to promote those values of like not only graduation, but like what comes afterwards. Um, so it is like rather than to be a barrier, it I think it, it's meant to be like to think about like how you think about yourself and if you like 
to not sacrifice your GPA for TSAC. So once you graduate, you know, you have other opportunity as well. So that's where that came from. I'm in alignment with Gabe. I think the GPA should be lower to 2.0 because it'll give you wiggle room to do things. As you all know, I had an issue with the police and Denny's got all the information. Life happens. And so setting the bar that high, well, let me rephrase that. 2.0 is a good ground to start with because as student government members, we have to automatically multitask. And so it will free up us having to shoot for 2.8 when some of us can get 3.0 or 3.5. But don't put so much of a buffet on the plate to begin with. So I'm in alignment with Gabe of it being starting at 2.0. I got your next read. Thank you. Um. I would agree with the um, the wiggle room, but also to be a student employee anywhere, you have to have like a 2.5. Um, and up uh, and to go to the to be able to use the rec center, you have to have us like a, a minimum of six, six credits. Um, so that's that's where that's coming from. Do you have like wait hold on? I think Gabe has a direct response for me, and maybe this is a misconception. So please. Yeah, but he has a direct okay. response. Uh, and like, maybe I'm a, I have a misconception on the 2.5, so please correct me. Um, yeah. So I'm not quite sure on the 2.5 aspect, but I will say is, well, I appreciate why I see where you're coming from with that mentality. That same mentality is that you need a work authorization to work on this university. And so that kind of brings in that aspect of, are we, of how is this equity based in the sense um, and bringing that idea. Thank you. Hi again. Um, you know, when we voted on this last year, I had reservations about setting the bar too low, and I agree that it should come up some. And I would suggest the 2.5 versus the 2.8 because, yes, okay, that's that's really halfway. And the thing is, we're supposed to be the leaders on this campus, so you would hope we would hope that. Being able to be um, involved on campus, but keeping our grades up. I mean, those are the most important things with being a college student. And I think that if we can't be leaders of the campus and at least maintain a 2.5, we should really focus on our grades and not be involved in other things. And I'm sorry, that's my mom hat, but it's also as a student, you know, I think it's realistic to say 2.5 to have, you know, however many credits, if six credits is what's required to be able to use campus facilities, then by all means, I agree with that as well. But I would say bringing that up to, and I think a 2.5 is what a C, and that's reasonable. We should be at least average to have this role, in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, just quick announcement. We got about two minutes left, so let's make it quick. Okay, I'm in alignment with the 2.5. However, let me throw a little bit in the kitty. So each semester, each of us as students get six out, um, six sessions of um, therapy with the, uh, the Tivoli Center. So let's for student council members, let's increase six sessions to eight sessions so that we can see someone outside of, of the Tivoli uh, setup. Let me say this correctly. Student government members should have at least eight sessions per semester being on the council because we are stressed out. We do go through things. And since we expected to have stellar excellence, give us the opportunity to seek therapy that's a little bit more than what the non-student government students have. I motion we uh, add two minutes. I'm gonna go for two. You, are you okay? My second. Thank you. Okay. Let's vote okay. on that. You, ha you have to ask for it. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Any Aye. objections? Aye. No, not to object. Thanks. I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> Um, two things. I agree with three. I don't think setting the bar at the minimum is the wisest thing for future leaders of the campus. I think we should be striving to be um, better than that. Um, but that's my take on it as well. Um, it's also a reflection of how you're doing in life, GPA, um, personally, and all that. Um, I will say a uh, direct response to John's uh, comment. I do agree with the, you know, the stress portion and having more uh, appointments, I guess, but I don't, don't know if that pertains to this, to TSAC necessarily. Yes, we can advocate for that, but I don't see, maybe Dr. Brown can have, ha has more insight on that comment but i don't see that being like something within our control necessarily to expand it to eight versus six but we can definitely advocate for it that's it thank you i also was wondering um regarding why cumulative gpa versus semester gpa because as we know if one person you know that say fails in their first semester first year in college um will that dictate then their ability to become a leader on campus uh, versus just like either a semester GPA or some sort of that. And what what will happen if the if the GPA does drop below 2.8 in, in like let's say the fall semester and the spring is going and the spring's happening, like will that person be kicked out? Will they put be put on probation? What measures will be put against that? Would you really share your Google? Real quick. Um so not set up on the 2.8 like that is a number of course like always happy to negotiate that one um how would you suggest doing the semester one so like we measure like when you when i guess is that do do we do okay i'm in a motion for five minutes sorry second okay. sweet all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any um, objections <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so I guess, do we do cumulative when people are trying to get, what do like when they turn in their application to run? And then after that, we look at like their semester GPA, or are you talking about like, we look at their last semester GPA? Um, so like, I wanna hear this suggestion and then, well, I think you're looking at GPA overall itself, you know, I think that really creates just a barrier because just because somebody failed that first year, that first semester, that first whatever does not mean that they're going to continue to fail. And therefore, if, and it has, and it has been shown that being involved in student organizations and student leadership can pr provide those skills to really make you more engaged and be more um, just better overall and have a better experience and, and increases GPA as well. And so that's why I'm just like, uh, I have the right response. Yeah, I would that, and then with, with looking at it, either the semester GPA or the yearly GPA, or the yearly cumulative GPA, wow, words. Um, I think it would be looking at the previous semester GPA versus the entire a, a cumulative GPA. Um, so let's say if person turns to the application, you ask, what was your GPA uh, that previous semester? Um, versus what what is your overall GPA because your overall GPA might not be telling the full story of what their experiences are or who they are as individuals versus you know if somebody gets a 1.0 fails that first semester but gets like a 2.5 2.8 that second semester okay yeah and so there's that increase and unfortunately I have to go I'll connect virtually right now cool. okay thank That's you cool. okay I I'm good I I, I see answers I just wanted to say, um, I think 2.5 is good. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because I know student orgs is changing the requirements starting next fall as well. So if you do want to be an executive officer um, in a student organization, um, the minimum is a 2.5 GPA. So I don't think having our GPA requirements lower than student organizations requirements is a good idea. You see, uh, Matt? So another 
avenue that I think can maybe split the difference. Uh, to like Gabe's point is look at the their more or less cumulative GP over the last year. And have that as a 2.5, but they'd still also have to be in good academic standings, which means even if they like failed the first semester or something that they would still have to have a 2.0 to be in good academic standings, but demonstrate at least like a year of like good academic excellence. All right, so here's what I'm saying. Life does happen. Life does. Y'all can hear me, can't you? For the GPA to be higher, but I don't want it to be tabled about the therapy. I feel like that as student government, as students, we all get six sessions per semester. I want to have added, and I'll agree with whatever you are deciding in the Kenny. GPA. But it'd be at least eight sessions for student government members. But we don't have any power over who but provides I want to that. But noted that that is a strong suggestion because I personally, being an older student, was going through some stress held by the police and some other things that you know about. And that should be introduced as part of the life happens, cumulative, because we got to be fair when it comes to therapy. That's the thing I want to make sure that you all are aware of. Okay, thank you. Um, so obviously life happens, but it's also those type of things that if you're going through something, it teaches you how to collect yourself better to be a leader, essentially how we're supposed to be. Here's to the point altogether. Uh, no, because that's part of being collected. I already have a good spiritual practice. I'm just saying, and I'm not being disputed. I'm just want y'all to remember that part. And I, I can talk offline. Okay. And stuff. Thank you. Just uh, in response to that, when I read this, I was doing some research too and kind of looking at some of our scholarship programs and um, other programs and 2.0 or good academic standing is, is typically like the direction that the university is going to. Um, Alejandro, you and I should talk and maybe Armando too offline about the student orgs requirement going up to 2.5 because I don't know when that was decided, but I need to know those things before we move forward on those types of policy changes um, because that I think a big deal will be made about that so I need to know about that and then in response to um, I really like the what Gay brought up that I hadn't even really thought about that I think is important to think about is the disadvantage to freshmen or students who are newer students with a higher you know with the higher you go with the gpa requirement it does disadvantage students who may have not done so well right in their first semester or their first year and we know because i used to work with first year students for like that was my job here for 10 years students typically do not do well in their first year like that is the year that most students actually really struggle academically as they're transitioning to the college environment and so and I think about our veteran students and a lot of our other identities. Um, I'm in a motion for five more minutes. Okay, go ahead. A second the motion. I motion for five more minutes. Oh, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. No, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, and so I think about, for example, like when, um, and I oversee the Veterans Center too, when we have those students who are acclimating from you know, to come into uh, this environment and some of the trauma and the things that they're experiencing. I just think there are lots of things that we need to think about because of the diverse populations that we serve and not wanting to disadvantage any particular um, type of student population, right? Um, and so that's, those are things that Gabe made me think about when he brought that up. And then finally, around the eight sessions, that is something certainly 
you can advocate for as a student government to the counseling center around the sessions, but that is not something that we can write into a resolution and demand or like make a, I don't know how to say it, that this is what you all would expect. Do you know what I mean? Without having those conversations with um, the leadership of the counseling center, because those are departmental policy changes and that's something that they would have to have the resources and the capacity for to be able to do that. Um, and it's something you could certainly advocate for, but it wouldn't be something that would only be for students who are part of student government. We can't do that for any specific population. So that's all. Um, I, I have with the, I have a direct comment with the, uh, our students feeling disadvantaged within their first year. I think I would be more than happy to compromise by perhaps making a lot, like a resolution that brings him in as like to follow TSAC if if their gpa it like it gets destroyed within their first year but like at the same like w i'm not like as, as someone that has like worked for tzac a lot this year it has been like it's not for the faint of heart and if at this point like if 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 we can't handle our academics and while we're like not handling life like tzac is it's gonna be hard it's gonna be really hard and i like when i got introduced to tzac i was told that it was empowering and while it, it has been it has also been like i i learned a lot about myself and like my limits and my boundaries and i don't know i tzac is a lot and i don't i want to be honest about that with students i, I want to be completely honest that it's not just coming into the office and like talking to one another, like it's a lot of emotional work. It's a lot of just work in general. It's, a, it's it requires research, it, like it's, it, it's a lot. Agree. I agree. I would like to um, agree with Denny because I believe that, yes, we wanna be inclusive and invite all people, you know, to, to run for office for this but also i think the administration expects a lot of this organization and the people that are in it and you know if if we are having problems and and there are a lot of big voices and maybe we're not able to come to agreement easily because you know some people talk loudly but don't collaborate well. Um, these are skills that are learned, of course, you know, hopefully at college, but in life. And if you aren't able to organize, you know, things in your own life or your education for your life, whatever, then Denny's right. I mean, Denny has done well above and beyond any other person that, you know, I was involved last year. And I know the year before there was a bit of chaos. So it really takes strength, the ability to listen, uh, maturity, and an um, understanding of what this role is while also being able to balance the educational commitments that you have at college, which is the reason that we're here first and foremost. John. Okay. Let the record show that John Nelson is going to personally communicate with the health center because I'm a part of access control and I'm going to be in communication with the department heads to facilitate a reason to add an amendment for student government members because we've all been stressed out to get an extra two sessions so that we can have outside help. And I will keep you all abreast of that. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other friendly amendments or anything? Oh, uh, well, oh, well go, go ahead and read this. Um, advisor's suggestion from Ramondo saying a medium of 2.25 that is above good standing but still accessible to most. I'm gonna, can I? Yes. Yeah. I, I have something after that. Um, I did not think about the suggestion Dr. Baron brought up on uh, having the accountability committee 
involved in this, and they should be if I'm asking for something to stand for a whole year. Um, so if anyone in the accountability committee has any suggestions to this, I, I would love to hear. Is Gabe, Gabe had to leave, didn't he? Yeah. Should we do five more minutes? I motion for five more minutes. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Well, all good. Reed, do you have any suggestions? Like, should we add this to the accountability committee? Like, the like elections code? Like, what? Well, that was what I mean. Armando has done incredible work on the elections code that we're going to see soon enough going through all that with him. But um, requirements for electability, I think, should be part of the election code and then, you know, incorporated into our constitution. OK, what do you, what do you, I mean, can we ask for an advisor comment and ask Armando this? Well, Dr. Barong, I think you have it. I think he's there. Yeah, someone. Maybe we can make a friendly amendment to what, what the question presents. is. How there, to incorporate. Yeah. No, sorry, you talked to any. Well, do, well, I think once we talk about incorporating the elections code, we're going to have to do a friendly amendment to the elections code. Um, mm -hmm. Well, right here, or here, how will that work? Yeah. So the, the thing. Or go ahead. Go ahead, Armando. I, didn't know. I was going to say the elections code is more so the guidance and the spirit of hosting elections. It doesn't necessarily have to be the defining matter of candidates. So I think that's where we have the, the gray area, but also the sweet spot of the constitution depicts eligibility and the elections code is, should solely just be on how elections are ran. It's from what I've understood, you know, working within this field for a little bit. Dr. Barone, please. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I would agree with that. The elections code is more about process eligibility requirements, and they were in the Constitution before, too. So this they can be reiterated through the elections code, but um, in terms of eligibility requirements. But I think what we're Gabe was asking about and I was speaking to is if a candidate or a council member does not meet your GPA requirements or six credit hour requirements, then I think what we just what you all need to be explicit about is indicating what happens in those cases, right? So if let's say, for example, we have a student counselor who's registered for 12 credit hours and drops down to six, right? Or four, mm -hmm. or I don't mm -hmm. know. And then what happens next, right? And what you can do is just defer to the vacancies process, right? Of the elections code where it would be, you would probably go to the next candidate. Okay. Or whatever, right? If, or do they get probation period? Like, what are we mm -hmm. going to do? And that's why I was asking right. about the accountability committee if they wanted to weigh in on that is because does that mean then we give them until the end of the semester? Or are you just saying if they fall below six credit hours, then we move on and fill the position with another counselor? Like, those are the nuances that I mm -hmm. think that need to be clarified because if not, this is going to come up later. Okay. Gabe, uh, we got two minutes left just by the way. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so I think um, with that, I would also say because in the spirit of, of restorativeness that, that we agreed on as a council also for restorative justice, then I think, you know, just dropping someone out of, you know, no, out of like, the, the council just be, because they don't meet the requirements for that one semester, I think that goes against that spirit of restorative justice and really trying to bring people back instead of excluding them. Yeah. I, I think at that point, um, like the student would have to go to like a tutoring session once a week or maybe twice, like once every two weeks. But just like make sure that like our students, especially in student government, have like those, like do we require them to have, like utilize the research, the resources the university has. Um, but I don't know, what do you, and, and those those would be the stipulations like attend if someone like drops they have a bad semester or if they like drop their credit the credit requirement like there has to be some like type of academic reinforcement um but i don't know that's 
we were going down that route, I would think more of just a more general like improvement plan because not all subject matters even have accessibility to tutors, but I like, like, like the accountability committee for sure. so like a improvement plan. Mm. So the yeah. accountability committee would have to come with an improvement plan. Yeah, I, I that sounds lovely. Can we, I'm uh, gonna, I, let's, is that okay? Yeah, I was just gonna motion to table it. So yeah. we, can, we can't table it. We can't? We can't table it because the code is going out on Monday. Oh. We can't so, table it. Yeah, we need to get this kind of approved. Ten no, minutes ago not... because we need to put the packets out. Let me just okay. tell you really quickly. Let me just jump in to say let, things uh, about... myself, Let me just motion. Let oh. me just motion for okay. three more minutes. Okay. Okay. I'll do, I'll yeah. Do five. Uh, motion for five more minutes. Okay. All in favor? I, I second and. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, let me just say, um, Matt is next in the queue, oh. and then okay. Will, and then Gabe. But if you have a direct comment, read. That's perfectly fine. I just was going to make a suggestion that this is about seeking candidacy. We can also change something, you know, in the accountability committee that has to do with um, corrective measures, assistance, um, you know, and support, whether, and maybe that includes something about counseling John, you know, all those other things. But at this point, we're right, we're working on the candidacy and what the minimum requirements are. We don't have to worry about maintaining or anything else at this juncture, I believe. Okay. Sure, you made my statement about the improvement plan. Okay. Uh, Will? I'm um, seeing that this might take a while to decide and add friendly amendments, and seeing that we have all these other things, should we? We can't table it. No, not. I'm not. I'm not going to suggest tabling. I was going to suggest either one, extending the meeting time to uh, all the other things on the agenda. Um, I like we we I don't I don't see us getting through this in I, thirty minutes. I think we're gonna. I, don't, I I would like to try for the sake of time, and then if if we get to like two twenty, you can, yeah. Okay. I gave John and then Dr. Brown. Thank you. Uh yeah. So can y'all hear me? Just real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah, okay, awesome. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I I like the idea of of having like like a plan set in place. However, my question is why is that plan coming in like middle semester instead of being offered as if somebody has a GPA that's below this, then they should also then they should be allowed to or then they should meet with the accountability committee to come up with this plan to help them further along through throughout the year versus it just coming in that like that second half of the of the year because i'm just wondering like why is it that that we're offering this help and this assistance in the middle of the year instead of offering it from the get-go um with students who who might not have the best gpa yeah like a plan of commitment yeah yeah like plan of commitment. somebody has like a lower gpa that they're going to commit to 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 the tutoring and to do all these other like requirements instead of just you know keeping them from joining because of their GPA instead of yeah. pro providing that help. I I like that. Yeah. Yeah. John. So I have a personal situation that I have to take care of and I've got to leave in the next few minutes to prevent this. So this can go forward. I vote with the majority so it won't be held up. I'm I'm in favor of what you all decide. So count me in on that so the bill can be passed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Brown. So I was just going to offer that yes, we need to get through a lot. So I I think to Ree's point, the most important thing right now is determining whatever you all are going to decide in terms of eligibility requirements for candidacy for right now. The elections code, Armando and I um, made the edits that were mostly grammatical, typos, misspelled words, <laughs> yeah. cleaned it up. It was, it needed it that. Um, and so those are the major changes that were made to, to the election code. And you all have had the opportunity to look at that. And we absolutely need you all to yeah. vote on that or tell us whatever, like if, if you had the opportunity to tell us. But so those two things are really important and the other constitution 
yeah. amendments are important, but they are not as time sensitive as the election code and then this amendment because it is directly related to eligibility eligibility requirements. Yeah. And so what we need is we need your approval to be able to move forward with um, elections. And so the elections codes and then these requirements are the big things that if you all decide this so that the packets can go out on Monday. But I do wanna ask if our elections manager has anything to offer or to add to that, that maybe I'm missing. Um, yeah, I'm in agreement. We just right now need to know like, what information we need to tell people for when they can run. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards we have more time to decide what to do while they're in office. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the main thing. We just need the, the entry GPA. Okay. I can give input on like cumulative versus semester if people want, but I don't know if that's like an appropriate place for me to give input in my position. So uh, I motion for five more minutes. I second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So the, fr the 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 friendly amendment that I then in place, we will go to more discussions. It would be the minimum clip, minimum cumulative GPA of twenty five, and if lower, and if yeah, and if lower, the student commits to a an an academic improvement plan. To, plan with the accountability committee. Um, and then then we take out the throughout their term. Um, okay, the student, hold on, let me read this real quick. 2.5, end of lower, the student commits to an academic improvement plan with the accountability committee. Uh, yeah, okay, accountability committee. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think someone else has something to say. Just add the TSAC account. They'd be like, who's the accountability committee? They won't know this. Oh yeah, the TSAC accountability. TSAC and capitalize the A and the C, I think. Cool. Uh, I have Sam first and they got you next, Dr. Brown. So I think we need to make sure we have clarity that is this for if someone wants to run and their GPA is already under 2.5? Can they commit yes. to this plan and then run? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Brace it. Um, so I'll, I mean, the, the, okay, I didn't think about the phrasing yet. Oh, <laughs> well, tell, like, oh, what do you mean? What are you, what are you asking? So basically, like, are we saying that someone has to have a 2.5 to run, but then during their time in office, if their GPA goes down, they oh. have assistance? Or is this, no. The requirement is 2.5, but if it's lower, you can commit to this assistance plan and then still yeah. run. But it says, or, as, no, because it says a student seeking candidacy in okay. TSAC must mm -hmm. be registered as a part time student with a sixth grade, out, sixth grade hours per semester and hold a minimum community GPA of 2.5. If lower, uh, yeah, so it's like a student seeking candidacy. I think that's the. All right. Yeah, that's. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, the, is that the, good enough? I like the language there. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page with that. Okay, bro. I'm thought, putting a, I'm putting something in the chat. Okay. I think I I understand. So you're saying in order to to seek candidacy, they have to have a 2.5. I thought we were talking about 2.25, but now we're back at 2.5. Is what I'm hearing you say? Yeah. I think most people said yeah. 2.5. Okay. Um and then what happens if they fall below 2.0? Right? Because then they're not even at satisfactory academic standing. And so what happens in that case? Well, is, does that, the the commitment plan, would that not, do you think that wouldn't suffice to like academic performance? Yeah, so let's say someone is, they have a 2.5 now yeah. in March, yeah. they're elected, they fall below 2.0 yeah. during the spring semester, and you need to make sure that you're indicating is that cumulative or is that semester, right? I was I was saying cumulative, and I think and I don't I don't think they should be barged from like remaining in TSAC. Like if I you mean if, to run, you're yeah, asking just to run. to run, yeah. Okay, but if they stay in TSAC and then the, the GPA falls out mm -hmm. after 2.0, like I don't think we should barge them from getting the resources that they were getting at the like at the 
at the beginning. Okay, I just want to make sure you're really explicit. Yeah, if that's what yeah. we're saying. Then I, I just think it needs to really be laid out because I worry that students are going to get upset if they don't know that. So on the front end, and um, and then so if they can fall below 2.0. They need to work with the accountability committee to come up with a commitment plan, improvement plan, right? And that's then yeah. what happens if they don't fulfill that or don't follow through? We can figure out the the details of that later, but I'm just, I think those are things we you all need to think about moving forward. Okay. Cool. I put another option based on what Dr. Braun said. If you did a semicolon said, however, if the cumulative GPA is at least 2.0, comma, the student candidate commits to an academic, an editor. yeah. Well, um, just for like clarity purposes, uh, we're, we're talking about all semesters here for the six credit hours, correct? At the time, yeah. Or are we talking semester. spring specific? I think we are not right now. I well, mean, just right for clarity's sake. About, Election. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about candidacy. Okay. Yeah, like that, that's at the time of candidacy. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm going to motion for five more minutes. Motion for five more minutes. I second. All in favor? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, so <laughs> what? Where? Where would the whoever the however fit? Just right after that five, put a semicolon because you're had adding a new statement that's related but not part of the same okay. sentence. Do you know however, what I'm saying? If the cumulative GPA is at least two point oh, comma yes, because that's our threshold, right? We're deciding that's the absolute yeah. bottom. We'll work with you and help you. But if you're under two point oh, you got other things worried to, to worry about. Okay. Does that and take sense? out. Yes, that's it. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay. But it's less than 2.0 instead of. It's at least, at least 2.0. Yeah. So it's, it's under 2.0. Is, is it at least or under 2.0, Re? At least 2.0 is the bottom. Oh. Oh. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that what y'all are thinking based on what Dr. Brown said? Does that, do you think that's good enough language? Yes, I agree. But like, does that, is that I'm asking about the language because I didn't understand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Matt, you were next on. I like where it's at there. Do we need to reference that if it's below 2.0, though, they're ineligible? Or is that just implied? It shouldn't be implied. I think we should be as explicit as possible for candidacy. Yeah. Yeah. Then after okay. 2.0, put this. OK, can I can I just quick quick? So uh, at least 2.0 if elected. If elected. OK. Yeah, I don't think that's what he was saying, but OK. No, sorry, I just thought about it. That was that was my fault. But then you could put in parentheses minimum requirement to run. Then there's it's all clear. Yeah. OK. I motion we move we end the discussion and move to voting. I second. I second. Sweet. All oh. in favor. Hi. 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 Okay. Anybody opposed? Let's vote this sucker. Cool. Okay. Let I motion we vote for this bill. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gabe? Oh, he's not. Okay. Aye. Cool. No, no. Cool. Uh, and then Gabe and I can work on the other stuff for the accountability committee. In the meantime, you know, it's not necessarily needed ASAP. Any objections? Any objections? I object. Oh. Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. Oh, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. One, two, three, four. John. Well, well John can't be here. No, he can't be. He's not here. He can't vote. But then he's saying majority. All right. Is yeah. that a thing? Can we do that? I don't know. I don't think we can do that. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. 
We got six. That's quorum. Six is quorum. But the thing is, only five people voted. Only five people voted yes. Is that still? Yeah. Okay. It's just, do we have six people? Yeah. That's it. Okay, so it, it passes. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Cool. cool. Oh, okay, it's my turn. I'm back in it. Okay, 215. Let's try. Amendment changes. Um, Armando. Yes. Hi, are you, we don't have, oh, we, we have the PowerPoint. Okay. Are you, are you directing this Armando or am I directing? If you would like to, I can, if you want to yeah. make it easy. I'm just not going to, everyone has read the changes. So I'll give you all about, you know, 10 to 15 seconds to read each slide. And then you all would just motion to vote if you could. Um, Penny will, I'll, I'll lead it, forget it, I'll lead it. <laughs> um, I just need you all to open the floor to voting. Uh, we will vote one by one, so each amendment is a single vote. Um, I'm sorry, 24, 23, 24 minutes. Um, each amendment is a single vote and will be handled separately. But can you all just open the floor to post all of the amendment changes one by one? Okay. Let's one by one. Uh, the original. The Student Advocacy Council shall consist of 12 MSU Denver students, where two of these students will be Student Advisory Committee to their area board, SACAB representatives, and one of these students will be the Board of Trustee Representative. Within the Council, there will be up to two elected chairs who facilitate Council meetings. Our meetings will best the power in the chairs to facilitate and maintain parliamentary order. Except, accepting the aforementioned power, the chairs will share in the equal in the equal fair distribution of power given to a member of the council. Wow. Each council will have an advisor from MSU Denver. Oh, never mind. Okay. So the new ones say student advocacy council. Oh, hold on. I can't. That's not. Oh. Okay, the Student Advocacy Council shall consist of 12 MSU Denver, 12 students, the top three vote earners in G, what? The top three vote earners in the TSAC election are invited to serve as the following. The highest vote earner is invited to serve as the Board of Trustees, student representative, the second and third highest earners to R2s, R2, R2B invited? are to be invited to serve on the Student Advisory Committee, so SACAP. Uh, within the council, there will be up to two selected chairs who facilitate council, uh, council meetings. The leadership roles are intended to primary, primarily maintain parliamentary order and represent the council in MSU's Denver President's Cabinet. Aside from that, the chairs will share in an equal and fair distribution of power given to all members. Each TSAC administration is to be advised by the university, appointed faculty, and staff members. Um, okay. Kenny, vote in. Yes. I have a friendly amendment to this one because not all council members who run will be eligible for board of trustees or SACAB. Well, it says that the highest vote, the, whoever has the highest vote. But it's not about highest vote. Like for yes, instance, I'm taking six credits as a council member. I cannot run for those positions to my knowledge. Yeah, it has to be full time and they have to full-time yeah okay if they so i would do a friendly amendment to like the top three vote earners who are eligible for the position yeah okay well we need to say what that means who are full-time students yeah For at least three years in uh, that for SACAP too, or just Board of Trustees? Okay, let's clarify that. Well, you could just put it or down. Maybe, in the first... 
based on eligibility in the elections code? This is, oh no, it's the constitution, sorry. Make it more simple because all that should be outlined in the elections code, correct? So instead of going through all of the requirements, just say who are eligible based on the elections code. I'm gonna, Will has something to say real quick. Um, granted our time frame and the importance of what we're discussing, I motion that we extend this meeting further than 30, 2 30, 30 and minutes. Thir about 30 minutes, at least 3 p.m. Okay, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any can objections? Someone just run, can someone just run and make sure y'all have the room for that long? No, can you stay? Um, okay. The top three is based on the elections code. Uh, Sam. So weren't we just discussing setting standards in the Constitution and then having elections code reflect reflect those standards with the candidacy requirements of the GPA? Yeah, so that's a good, that's so a good point. So if we're referencing the elections code and the Constitution, but the elections code is based on the Constitution, then we don't have like a basis. So I think we should keep it consistent and state the requirements in the Constitution if we're going to be basing the election code off of the Constitution. But the elections code is going to be voted into the Constitution. Yes. So it's like referring to another part of this same document. Oh, okay, but then if we're writing those requirements in the election code, why are we writing the GPA requirements in the Constitution? So, we but isn't the basis aren't. of the elections code the Constitution rules? No. No? No, you guys are, that, that's why we have to codify it because they're different. Okay. They're different documents. So I think what I think could be, uh, since we're referring to the we're referring to the constitution and the constitution we I mean sorry and the elections code well could, we could say if voting for the board of trustees then you have to fulfill this like mm -hmm. if, yeah like in order to be invited to be a board of trustees member you have to have these mm -hmm. yeah does that is that a good compromise yeah yep does that make sense I feel like you're in love to her own I, I Yeah. Yeah, just it's yeah, it seems like we should set that precedent based on our previous discussion. OK, I understand. The other thing I want to reiterate is that I have shared the doc, this constitution and these amendments with our general counsel, and I'm still waiting on him for like final, like, like, I mean, all this other stuff, the election codes he said is fine, but all these mm -hmm. other amendments, I haven't heard back from Nick. So I just want you all to know you might be voting all of this, but I still think it's pending review by general counsel. That's right. Thank okay. Um, um, okay. So, so Sam, you're saying that we should put, we should be like clarify all of these requirements in there. I I think if we're codifying the election code into the constitution, then it's okay to reference the elections code. But then that just means that the source of the requirements to me is the elections code. Yeah. Okay. Anybody has any like comment on whether they want it in the constitution or in in the elections code, or are we okay with just referring? Will. I have more so of a question. So if we when we, if, if, when, uh, if, I don't know, if we codify it, right, um, changing the elections code, just the elections code and not necessarily the constitution would have to go through the council as a change. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand that because I think that is, personally, I think that's problematic if it has to go through us for an elections uh election cup <clears throat> excuse me personally um every change can you know it can it, it can be you know i don't know if there's a conflict of interest there like well, what like how, well, do we, we, how does that change we we just voted into changing our requirement right. so okay uh, just looked around i think i would rather hear you okay hear my sorry um 
So what we're asking for is to codify the elections code and make it adopt it as part of your constitution, right? right. So since the constitution is the primary governing document by you all voting on and agreeing that the election code is codified right through the constitution which is the primary governing document that's what armando and i are asking for the amendment that denny proposed and that you all just voted on um is around requirements right around what you all want for the future counselors to have in order to participate in tsac Armando and I didn't decide that. We couldn't decide that. That was decided by the previous council. Okay. Right? So those are two separate things. <laughs> and I hear what Sam is saying. Sam is saying, <laughs> then the elections code should reflect, right, what you all just voted on, but we didn't have that information before because right. you just voted on it today. Does that make sense? And I know that we're going to have folks really looking deeply at these documents. And so right now, <laughs> <laughs> right now, I think what is important is what is in the Constitution and this amendment that we can add it, Sam can add it, right, to the elections code. But we're doing these things simultaneously, I guess, is what I'm saying, because they hadn't made this amendment to candidacy until today. Sure. Yeah. I think we'll put like out kind of what I was thinking is like, um, if so, we're codifying the elections code into the constitution. Is the elections code just now a piece of the constitution that's changed the same way other pieces are, or is that right. still something that would be modified the way it has been previously as like kind of a separate entity? It's a, that, that's a good question. I, my response to that would be that I would, Armando and I did it this year because we didn't have an elections <laughs> manager. Right, and we didn't have someone hired, but next year right. my intent would be it with the elections manager to receive that. Any changes or modifications right. to the elections code, it wouldn't have been me and Armando. Uh, Ray, your mic's on. Do you mind? Oh, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. Okay, I, I don't know where that got off. What? No, no, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay. One, you, you did, I think you, you're next. Yeah, so I think I'm just worried about the language. And so if we're, if the elections manager is able to change the elections code, but the elections code is part of the constitution, that means the elections manager is modifying parts of the constitution without TSEC voting on it, correct? Okay. So, okay. So the elections manager would like propose changes to the code. TSEC votes on it. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Do, okay. Uh, hold, hold on. Do you have, I don't know. Does that, does that seem like a conflict of interest at all? No. I mean, it seems like we're already running on the precedent that the council votes on requirements. So I think it's still okay. mechanically the same. So. That, that seems to track with what we've been doing previously, so that's okay. 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 Are you, you're good. Will? Um, so, uh, pertaining to language, you know, top three voters, right, uh, who are eligible will be in, are invited. Uh, let's say they don't accept those. Yep. No, but the no, are invited, right, the wording there. Yep. Those nominations pretty much, it's like you're nominating them to these positions, right? So what if they decline those positions? It's, is that, but is that in, I, I didn't see that portion in there, well, that I writing. Think, I think we would need to vote on that. Like, well, like Tisa would need to vote on, or like nominate someone. Yeah, you're yeah. right. It's is not that there. in there, yeah, so. Goes in progressive order of votes. Uh, Kenny, can you add that? Goes in progressive order of votes. The top earners who are eligible I invite Sarah the following. Uh, hold on. I'm invited to serve on the student right of the. Uh, okay. After SACAB. If refused. Um, no invitations. Okay. Uh, hold on. If, let, let me finish the sentence and we'll move it. 
um, it refused to imitate, no, it refused two invitations. Oh, I don't know, help me. It, ref it refused, oh, if the invitation is refused, sorry, I'm so sorry, Kenny. And it goes to the council or something. Like it refused, uh, nomination goes in progressive order of votes. What if, okay, oh, I guess that's, that's cool. Okay. Cool. Um, any other ones? Kenny, do you want to open the floor to voting? Oh, wait, what did you, what were you saying about that, where the sentence should go? The sentence that we just added, I think we should add it after MSU Denver's president cabinet. Because is in the next two, with the highest like the chair and the, the, chair vice, and the chair. vice chair yeah so like no it just says within the council there will be up to two selected chairs like they have no, to do nothing okay. with their votes okay never mind never mind okay let's regard that okay let's let's do voting kenny um, yes can i yeah Sorry for go taking ahead. up more time but i do think it's important um i do want to say this uh, when they go into these positions a lot of the times um, at least from my experience, these positions are, I'm just putting this out there. This is me. This is Will. These positions require some form, I feel like experience going into. Um, that's why I don't know if the, the, the progressive of putting the next person with the highest votes is necessarily the smartest way to approach that. I agree. I would think maybe it should go to the council I agree. as a, you know, oh, I, I, I would like to do it. And, you know, we vote on it kind of thing instead of just handing it to the next person who has the highest votes kind of thing. So I don't necessarily agree with but that. Ultimately, um, let's say mm -hmm. if like some of the person that ended up with the least amount of votes wanted it, like it can, there's opportunity. Uh, that's still a long line though, yeah. Right, yeah. So I still think that's not the best way to handle that personally. That's my opinion. Um, I, if, you know, make, I don't know. I think, I think honestly the best approach is to, for it to go to the, the council directly and for the council to decide together through voting who those positions should be fall, falling to if those three, uh, voters deny the invitation to those positions because previously in the last election you could decide to run for those positions that gave you the option for the candidates and basically what that does is that puts the responsibility on the candidates to find out about the position and the responsibilities so that's that's what i have an issue with with this uh um wording um, yeah, I also looking at just the rules from last year, it does seem like there are special qualifications. Um, like I think Matt was discussing earlier, um, where like you have to have a residency and a certain GPA. So would amending this get rid of those qualifications would be my question. Cause then whoever gets the most votes might not meet all those qualifications. Okay, so I guess my question here is why, why, I don't know who, who wrote this, uh, but I think the way it, it was that like people specifically run for these positions should, because like why, why are we throwing people into the fire if they don't want to react? So I, I, Gabe, hi. Gabe. Hi. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I was also just gonna voice that of like, why, if if anybody has the why as to what, why it was structured this way versus the students electing who who gets into these positions. Um, yeah. And so I'm just wondering like, why was that decision made to be removed from the students' um, voice and students choosing versus um, versus pop at this point popularity in a sense. Yes, I agree. I agree. This is this is strange. I don't know where it came from. 
I don't know, uh, but I think with, I think it should be changed. Let me think about the language. Can you? So students. Um, so once student after after then students, let me let me voice it real quick and then see if anybody has any objections. Uh, so after them for students. Uh, one. The one word trustee students representative. And two. Take out advisory committee um, members, but how how do we phrase? I don't know how how was it before. Look onto the left. We can leave that first <laughs> sentence as it was, and just change where we talk about the sentence where we talk about within the council. So you can go back to that original first sentence, which is very nebulous, that ends with board of trustee representative, and not prescribe how they. Are chosen here but then the next sentence i changed because we are not having two elected chairs we have the or a chair and a vice chair i changed yeah. that rest of it so the first part if you want to go back to that original statement on the left you can okay that uh where is that where students and one of the okay i see yeah. Um, okay, so I think let's add that sentence and say who will be elected by the student body. body. Yeah, so all of that sentence, all of the whole sentence, like copy it into I'm good. Into the proposed changes and so replace that. That first sentence, mm -hmm. copy it. Yeah, yeah, that until representative. Yeah, yeah. and then copy it after msu denver students yes right all members students okay board representative okay which and then oh wait and then after representative comma the, the like well you'll just copy it and paste it after representative comma oh my god you have to go we can't do this without you. <laughs> no, I'm scared. That's not it. I'm scared. <laughs> no. Can we do this without an advisor? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, because this is important. Okay. We'll be at the board to representation, which shall be elected by the student body. Okay, and then we get rid of all the way until SACAB for the next one. Yep. And then the next one too, the next sentence. Yep. Okay, I like the rest. How do we feel? Gabe, I don't think we meet quorum anymore, right? Anymore, right? Will went to one, two, three, four, five. Will is gonna come back from water, and we'll we'll vote because it's six. Okay. Yes, Gabe. I'll second it. Okay, give me a thumbs up or something. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, well, now we have to wait for a while. Can we are we okay with moving into the second one and voting in the first one when Will comes back? Okay. How are we acknowledging that we've approved this? Like after that last sentence, are you gonna say voted and approved? You know, like in you know, at the end of each page? What are you gonna do to give this uh, back will, to Armando? I will keep track of that. Uh but yeah, I can also okay. put it there at the end just for for the record. Hopefully we'll we'll go faster than this one. Goodness. <laughs> Y'all are supposed to have read this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I I just I didn't I was not aware of that one. Okay, that oh. one definitely caught me off of guard. Cool. Well, do you want to read that real quick? I think we all were okay with what it said. Do you just want to read it into what we transformed it? Oh yes, Kenny. Uh, speaking of which, I think the first two sentences are kind of repeating. So. Oh yeah. You know, just get rid of the first one. Wait. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. 
just for yourself? The student, okay, this is what's being proposed. The Student Advocacy Council should consist of 12 MSU Denver students, where two of these students will be Student Advisory Committee, will, will be Student Advisory Committee to the Aurora Board, SACAB representatives, and one of these students will be the Board of Trustee representative, which shall be elected by the student body. Within the council, there will be up to two elected chairs or a chair and vice chair who facilitate council meetings. These leadership roles are intended to primarily maintain parliamentary order and represent the council and the MSU Denver's pre president's cabinet. Aside from that, the chairs will share an equal and fair distribution of power given to all other members. Each TSAC administration is to be advised by the university's appointed fac faculty or staff members. All right, just to make this a little bit faster, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Abstentions? No. Okay. Well, the next one is written in your heads real quick, and then if you have anything to say. Just just read the other one. The, I mean, the, the one on the right. Sorry. I didn't put that last sentence in about the most votes gets to be the chair. Oh, I think that's after. I think we're just generally saying, I don't know. We might be able to remove that. Oh, mm. okay. Mm. Okay, I don't have any objections to that. What about, okay, so what if they are removed from? It says. This is election. This is oh, just election. Yes. Yeah, this is just election. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Woo. Penny, have to vote. All right, we're voting. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I abstained. Okay. This is a change. Okay. This is strange. We were trying to be realistic with this. Okay. We are not living by the one on the left, even though the idea was that we would, we are not. So we were, Mike and I went over this and we decided we needed to be realistic. So this is why the 55. Okay. Any objections? Okay, we're good, Kenny. All right, we move to vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Oh my God, there's 40 of these. Mm. Like 25 more. <laughs> we'll get through it. We'll get through it. This just has a little more detail about what committees do than what we had before. But it's largely the same. We all good? Yep. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay.
So we've added accountability here and how that process works. And referred to the other amendments where the information lies. Gabe. Would the amendment then of of like that um GPA um plan of like of support, would that go into this or would that be like a whole other thing? Would this just be like a change to an amendment type of thing? Question. I think it's going to be a change to the amendment because the other the rest of that is about um qualifying to run. So we need to make a change to the accountability um, structure, Gabe, with another amendment. Thank you, Reed. Okay. Okay. Are we ready then? All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any opposition? That That's weird. Something got. One? So this is but where that information should sit. I don't know what happened on the. Oh, we're making structure, a structure one, Ray. Hmm. Okay, we will. Looks like it might be a double. It might. It's a double, duplicated one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we just voted on. We did not vote on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we had taken. I don't have the details though. Armando does, but I think basically in the structure. It was largely the same, but it talked about hygiene and other things. I don't know. I think we took some of that out and made it simpler. Okay. okay. Um, some wording here, the advisors, maybe going back to like whoever's appointed, right? Would they still hold that title of uh, advisors? I'm assuming if the school elects whoever for, oh, forget that thought. Sorry. OK, I'm good. Is everybody good? Oh, sweet. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? The meetings. Thank you for the as a guide. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I love that. Sweet, I'm good. Okay, as a guide, that's important. Okay, not as like, all right. Not as ready, all good. Wait, keep the reading. Uh, awesome. Okay. All good. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any opposition? Okay. Let us read the other one. There's any. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Executive assistant star. <laughs> Ooh. Perfect. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Are you good to go? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No abstentions, no opposition. So I updated the hours based on, you know, the 26 hours to Kenny or the executive assistant, then 24 hours to the up in advance of the meeting. Okay. 
explaining resolutions. I'm good. Okay. All right. Everyone good? Yeah. Yep. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We just added the accountability committee to talk about violation of the terms, but the terms are the same pretty much. OK. All right, everyone all good? Yep. Yep. Alrighty, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions, any opposition? Powers, powers. That's going to the um, budget, new budget amendment, that number one that I believe that footnote, if you click on it, it should anyway. Because we agreed on the new uh, budget amendment. OK. All right, everyone, all good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions, any opposition? Aye. Okay. Next one. If I'm, uh, so honestly, I added the advisors rights and ability to act because of past disrespect and things to advisors like so yeah. yeah yep uh, yeah yeah that's yep. good yeah necessary for sure yeah. right all righty everyone ready mm -hmm. yep all righty all those in favor aye, aye. 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 Way there. Yay. This is a lot of hippopotamus. Okay. <laughs> and this is just kind of reordered based on the fact that now public comment is not at the end, like this was originally stating. It's, you know, mm -hmm. where we have it. I didn't want to assign the time to it, but to say that it's, you know, in within the meeting. Okay. Awesome. All right, everyone ready? Yep. yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any opposition? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to motion for 20 minutes. Yep. I, I second that. Okay. Sorry. Okay, everybody in favor? Aye. 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 We'll we'll try, Sam. We'll try. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> yep.
Okay. Right, is it the next one? Yeah. Amendment. So it's about. Um, I think I just tried to clarify the language a little bit. That's it. Not much has changed. Adding a comma, adding a phrase to make the sentence make more sense, you know, stuff like that. It's about the chair, right? Yes. In presenting, you know, resolutions uh -huh. or amendments, right? Got it. And the order of things progressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, everyone, all good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any oppositions? Yes, this is all we were talking about. Uh, so the roles, see, because I added the role, <laughs> I took out the handbook and then I added, you know, because I'd explained it more in section one. So all yeah. we need to do is change their roles are outlined in the elections code because that's where we're going to put them, right? Our outlined yeah yep she out she doesn't even go here anymore tu primera chamba y tu micrófono está prendido okay oh sorry i'm good all right are we all ready yep all those in favor aye aye I. Uh, okay, I'm good. I read it. I read it. Yeah. My phone is dead. It's it's saying that the the standing committees are in flex flux. Yeah. You know, they can change. What it's fine. Thank you. I'm good, Kenny. Uh, we previously right. had listed standing committees and they were like COVID committee. You know, they change. So that's why it's more general. No, we're about to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You all ready? Yep. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Oh. I don't recognize this. Yeah, what is this? Because this is chair responsibilities and it's talking about the budget chair. I think it's for the committee. Or, uh, this is chair I think this is under the standing committee part. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Um, I, I think like that's it. a friendly amendment to be more inclusive in language. Instead of right hand man, just change it to something else. <laughs> well, assist. I get the, assist, the idea. Assist the budget chair when help is needed. Okay. Their vice chair will assist. We see you, Will. There you go. We see you. Thanks for you go, Will. Who will? <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any off, any abstentions? None. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. I eleven eleven. Oh. 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 Yeah, you know, I got things to do. <laughs> no, Gabe, you can't leave. No. We can't okay, hurry, hurry. Me. How many more votes? How many? Come yes, on. Yes, Vote. we have. We have. Wait, I say yes. Because it's. Yes, we, I say right, yes. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Go. 
Yeah. We, we uh, I, I don't know. Click, I don't click, know click it. Yeah, let's click. I. Oh, I oh. thought we did that. Okay. Chair. No, it's different. Yeah, we didn't vote on the chair. What's happening? Oh, I see. No, yeah, we did that talking one. About, talking about chairs within committees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next one is teacher president. Uh, got it. Yes. Yep. Yep. If you object, just say you object. We'll make this this faster. And then we just. I get that we have to go and we like we cannot vote without Gabe. Okay. That's the thing. I get so that. I took out. This is where I took out the committee names because. Each activated committee will work. Da, 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 da. It's just talking about having these committees. And this is for university led academic and policy initiatives, as we know, right? Oh my gosh. These yeah. are advisory committees. Um, okay. Dr. Barone, should we move should we pause this and go into the codifying elections into the okay, let's pause this and let's go into the codifying elections into the constitution. Okay. Just because we need Gabe to do this. We yeah, and th this can be done at another day. Yep. But okay. this needs, yeah. Bring it, bring it. Hello. Get Mike. Oh, that's smart. Okay. No. Right. We're gonna do Constitution, Michael. Is Michael coming back? There's, Maybe. there's, there's no doc. There is no document on codifying the constitution. Uh, election what? Code. The election, election code code. to the constitution. There is no document. You're kidding. That was the amendments. No, he sent the amendments. So it's further down. Oh, this one. Which one? Is it his like election code? Is it this yeah. one? Probably. Mike's here. Okay, we're good. Drama in JSSB. <laughs> this one? You don't have to read it all now. There's nothing to see. No, we, we I, I read it. Oh. Did every, please tell me we already read it. Are we so putting on Braun, a resolution for this? No, we're yeah. What there is no the thing is like there is no resolution to vote on, Dr. Brown. Yeah, there's no resolution to codify the elections code. It's a problem. We just have the elections code. Uh oh. So we're waiting for someone to write a resolution. Oh dear. I did a draft one, but I sent it to, I think I sent it to Mike and Mike. it just wasn't proposed. And at this point, if we are codifying. We didn't have 24 hours to see yeah. it because we didn't yeah. see it. Well, so. Would it be worth uh, calling a like special session early next week just for that? Yeah. Yeah, maybe we do an online. Right. So I can technically wait until March 11th to have packets available. Because mm -hmm. um, that's like our, our opening date for receiving applications. So I know it's still like people should have access before we start receiving applications, but could technically wait that long. and. Um, I'm also noticing that the, so we're talking like the article one, section one refers to the election code yeah. for roles and responsibilities, but then the election code doesn't have the roles and responsibilities of SACAB and trustee listed out. Okay. So we need to add that. Okay. And I, then unless I have an old version of the elections code, but I was just looking through. So. So if we were able to do a resolution and vote on this on the 8th, next Friday, there'd be enough time. Okay. Y yeah, that would technically be okay, but we have to have it done by then. And then I could have 
everything finalized like okay. after the meeting on Friday. Is that okay for you? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't I think can, we have any choice. Be, yeah. Okay. I'd rather have it be good and delayed a little bit than rushed and miss something. I like that. I so just in terms of timeline though, Sam, how mm -hmm. does that modify the elections timeline? I, that I don't, was proposed. I don't think we need to modify anything because we have application packets open till the 27th. So I think people will have plenty of time to. Okay. Apply so still. they'll still have two and a half weeks or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's just like, even if we distribute them on March 11th, they'll have a week of school and a week of spring break and then a couple of days still. So I think that should be okay. I don't think we need to change anything. Okay. I just want to make sure. Um, there's enough time for students to be able to because and then campaigning starts. Yeah, campaigning starts um, April 4th. Um, so but we could last year, it looks like they extended the they application did. deadline. So they we did. could we yeah. do have the president to like do that again. If we need to, we could push it. Okay, by a week. So that's where we could if we needed some flexibility and OK. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think on the, the starting end, we should be OK. OK, I just want to make sure because I just concerned okay. about some people complaining. Yeah. That's who, okay. who is going to work on this to write the resolution? And Matt, you started that? I already did it. If he has a draft, if he, he has a draft. It to me, I'll, uh, I'll work on it with you. And we need to just add to the election code the yes, the correct sorry, information. What? Sorry. What was that, Matt? I can post in the chat right now. OK, we'll just let's just send it and then we'll work on it this week. If we're okay. concerned about the timeline, which we just said you're you're good. He's okay. You're okay. Okay, we're okay. So let's put it in the agenda for next Friday. That is like the one, like the very first thing we're gonna do. Yeah, Dr. Brown, you have something to say? I'm sorry. Um, and then I say, what would yes, Will? I say we go back to the constitutional amendments, the changes. We still okay. have that time that just we extended. Just to clarify, our tasks this week are to finish that resolution. Um, and who's going to add the SECA rules to the elections code? Would that be you? Yeah, I can okay. I can write them out and add them um, yeah. to the code. Okay. Sam can make those adjustments to the code. Awesome. Great. Okay. I'll, I'll get that done by the meeting next week. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, Actually, yeah. can I suggest, Sam, that you send those before, like that this is shared at least 24 hours before with the resolution so that people have time to review it before yeah. it's voted on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, um, I, honestly, I could probably have it done by Tuesday or Wednesday, so I should push them out. Perfect. Thank you so much. Matt. So, yeah, let's check on the updates and stuff from the elections code, but I posted the amendment to codify it in the chat. If anybody has like, suggestions, let us Sounds know. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Um, before we keep going, thank you everybody for like participating and like I'm glad I'm glad we got to this point. And thank you everybody for being so invested and like really, really caring. I just I appreciate you all a lot. Okay, sorry, let's go. <laughs> now we have time to do we were in the chairperson, yeah. Okay. No. Let me just look at it because. Yeah. So we lost okay. Gabe, but we gained Mike. So we're yes. good, right? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm good. Is everybody good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any objections? I think I just really. took out the listed ones because I figured they would change. That was really. I can't. Okay. And then I changed the so. end. Okay. All righty. Are we all ready? Yep. Alrighty, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Any abstentions, any objections? What? Oh, this is replaced. So the hope was we were going to be able to take out those other bullet points instead of keeping in the information about judiciary, a committee that doesn't apply. They're taking it out of the original constitution. So you you want everything? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that's what, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming, Mike, you tell me, can we vote to remove this from the original or does it need to stay? I don't know if he's listening. I'm Michael, caught up one one second. Okay. Hold up. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, so we're just getting rid of that. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to get rid of this, just like we got rid of all the handbook stuff in here. So. Correct. So the that amendments, because you you wrote something new, will be a, this would basically abolish that amendment. So. A bit amendment five. But it doesn't say that. That's what are weird. You proposing? It says Amendment Five no longer applies and is completely replaced. But it's weird that he just picked this up because there were several others. Maybe there's. Can you Maybe scroll down the, down the left line. side to show us down the left side? Just scroll down without clicking on every page. You know what I'm saying? So we can get a view. Just keep scrolling. Twenty-three, twenty-four on the left. Oh well. Just wait, what? I just want to see what Armando did because this is the only case where he's kept. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you go back up, sorry, go back up to this amendment five. What we had done is try to delete all of that because it doesn't exist anymore. So I think what Mike's saying is we're voting to remove the information about Judiciary Committee because it doesn't apply anymore. But we oh, would keep, okay. keep the highlighted Amendment 5 no longer applies. is completely replaced by Amendments 13 and 14. Okay, so should we take the text out? Yes, is that what you're saying? the, okay, the bullet-pointed so text. That's what bullet. we're, well, that's what we're voting to do. It doesn't exist anymore. We don't follow this. Okay. You know, enforcing sunshine laws and enforcing the handbook that doesn't exist. There's a lot of handbook talk. I like that. Yeah. All right. Are we all ready? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any objections? Wait, what? Hmm. That that weird reason. You know that word is is it's where that wording is weird. Passing of this. The CISA constitution common now obsolete as of amendment. That, oh, that the word. handbook. This must have been. He didn't take this out, but this was about all about the handbook. Okay. So there were pages yeah. and pages about the handbook, and so we are voting to remove amendment six completely, which is uh, regarding the handbook. Can you, let's change the TSAC, the constitution, take it to the handbook. Let's say handbook. Yes. Yes, thank you. That's correct. Yes, okay. perfect. All righty, are we all ready? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You're almost there, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you for being here. Why would we do without you? So this is interesting because the original I wording is. Any. Thank yeah. you, Sandy. This is meeting accountability and counselor accountability. And that's like the showing up part. I mean, it, it should be more about attendance rather than accountability. But it's it's attending at events and attending at meetings and attending in the office. 
My amendment, my friendly amendment is change the title to meeting attendance. That's my friendly amendment what, to this. So there's no confusion. <laughs> can we do uh, my, my friendly amendment is counselor attendance. Because yes. you're talking about like have other type of advocacy work. Right. In the bottom. So that's right. my friendly amendment. OK. Right. I'm in for it. All right. Are we all ready? Yep. Okay, all yes. in favor? Aye. 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 just says that basically. <laughs> okay. Cute. All right. You all ready? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh my God, how much more do we have? I have another meeting. I pushed back. Three, three more slides. Okay. <laughs> Hurry. Isn't this election codes? No, no. Never mind. Never mind. All right. I'm going to stay. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. Okay. All right. Are we all ready? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So yeah. I want you to be to note, even though we've already voted on this. The main change here was to change we will do this to we may do this. You know, it just gives yeah. us that flexibility that, you know, we don't have to do it. <laughs> that was our thinking anyway. Yeah. Okay. Love it. All right, you all ready? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Aye. Any abstentions? Yeah. Here we go. Woo. No more handbook. Anything we want to add about Robert's rules just being a suggestion? I, I want to also, if a friendly suggestion amendment, um, I think that it should also be reiterated that Robert's rules is not law. It yeah, is somewhere. Where is that, Mike? We said is that. This, is, is this guide? Yeah. Is this guide? And I still think that that could be problematic. This is about the handbook, dude. This is like the handbook has no authority. This okay. is not about Robert's rules. Okay. <laughs> this is not. But but I can't remember where we talked about Robert's rules because we did, didn't we, Mike? You did. And it, it's at the beginning. And it says oh. that Robert's rules should serve as a guide. I specifically made a comment on that in the crack changes. I think uh, I changed it to what you said, but I sadly I've got y'all. I gotta go. I'm missing this. I gotta go. What am I gonna do? Let's put on one more. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want me to wait until? Because I have got to go. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, this I think it's fine. Um, With the Roberts rules, I, I hear you. Gonna, I, 
Yeah, I think we said okay with the Robert's rules. We will we'll, we will look into this, and if there, anything else, we'll talk about it next week. Let's vote on okay. this. Okay. But I think so far yeah. it's acceptable. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Last one. Removal. Yeah, removal. I know what we're talking about because that was the accountability for the accountability structure. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. All righty. All good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That concludes the amendments. Sweet. Hey, I love y'all. I guess good. Bye. I have Bye, Thank Bye, you again. Bye. Bye. Oh. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for everything. She did a lot. Okay, the shared governance structures, I'll just table it. I'll put it in the chat. It doesn't, we don't have to vote or anything. I was just gonna bring it up. Uh, okay, well, we can vote because we don't need quorum anymore. So we're just going to adjourn this meeting. But how are we gonna make a motion we don't need quorum? That's what I'm saying. Do we just have to stay here? <laughs> stay here till okay. next week. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Everyone, thank you so much for your input and for being so committed to this. We have two months left, and I'm just very grateful for all of you. Thank you.